Beneath our feet lies a world unknown, a hidden society that thrives in the shadows. Away from the human eyes and far from the sun, they lurk in forgotten sewers and secret chambers of New York City, a world filled with strange creatures who live to do one thing, scare us. These monsters aren't just figments of our imagination or mere bedtime tales. They belong to an ancient and intricate society bound by rules and traditions passed down through generations. For these creatures, scaring isn't a hobby, it's an art, a way of life. But monsters aren't born experts in the art of fear. They must train and perfect their craft, because in their world, only the best thrive. And when it comes to the best, no monsters embody that spirit more than these three. Meet Ickis, Crum, and Oblina, students of the prestigious Monster Academy, each with their own unique talents and their own fears. Together, they push the boundaries of what it means to scare, all the while navigating the trials of monster society and facing their toughest critics, each other. Oh, and their teacher, the Honorable Gromble. So I invite you all to sit back, relax, and grab yourself a nice hot cup of snorching. In today's Retro Shiz, we're delving into the vintage toys of these Nicktooned creatures, following them from the depths of Mattel and into the modern Mondo microcosm. This is a look at the terrifyingly toyetic world of Nickelodeon's Ah! Real Monsters. <laughs> Now, before we begin, we must travel all the way back to the year 1994 as Ah! Real Monsters bursts onto television screens, inviting audiences into a wildly imaginative underworld teeming with peculiar, endearing characters. The series was a bold addition to Nickelodeon's Nicktoons lineup, blending humor and horror in a way that both thrilled and amused young viewers. Its unique animation style and oddball creatures certainly had its ups and downs, but ultimately won over fans, making it a cult favorite now in the modern era. In a time when kids' TV was pushing boundaries, Ah! Real Monsters stood out as a celebration of the weird, the dark, and the delightfully monstrous. And with that delightfully monstrous cartoon show came a delightfully monstrous toy line courtesy of Mattel. And what I always found odd is that when I walked into Toys R Us that one day when I was a kid and saw Ah! Real Monsters toys on the shelves, of course, I immediately saw Ickes, Crumb, and the Gromble. Oblina was actually nowhere to be found. However, there were all these other monsters. And for myself, having watched the cartoon, immediately no alarms went off. Nothing really grabbed my attention in terms of, oh, I know that character, or, oh, yeah, that's that monster from that one episode. Nothing. So who did I take home that day? Well, Ekis, Crumb, and the Grobble, and then, of course, eventually, much more eventually, Oblina. However, what I found in doing research in this modern day is that the reasoning behind these extra monsters in this line is amazing. It is so interesting. And yes, we are going to be talking about that today to kick everything off. So I invite you to head over to the toy designer Mel Burncrantz website. I will put a link down in the description below. He has an amazing, an amazing website that fully details not only his extensive work, his life's work, but also this very interesting article that details out how the Ah! Real Monsters toy line came into being. However, I will tell you this, we will briefly go over this, but I want you to go and experience his website. I want you to read the articles. I want you to see everything that he has posted from start to finish. It is so fascinating if you are a toy collector, a fan of Ah! Real Monsters, or just in seeing the wild, wacky process of how toys get made. This is thoroughly interesting because most of the characters from the Ah! Real Monsters Mattel toy line, in fact, started as this wild idea from Mel Burncrant because they were initially called the Pets of Frankenstein. And from shopping them around from Kenner to Galoob and then finally ending on Mattel, which again is so interesting to see how toys were created then, seeing how toys are created now. They weren't based off anything, but eventually, in kind of seeing all the different designs, of which 
These are just a few. So full credit to artist and designer Mel Bernkrant. It is so cool to me to be a little kid again and go, what are these characters? These aren't in real monsters. I don't understand what I'm looking at. But now to see the genesis of everything that I have on my shelf, everything that will be in this video today, it's just so wonderful to see the beginnings of what would be Scarfor or Sproink and Groink or this creature octopus monster that was in a chest and sadly never made it into the line. But you look at all these and you think, yeah, this could be potentially our real monsters or heck, just its own line of monsters called the Pets of Frankenstein. So as the journey continued from Mel to get these toys created, he journeyed to Toy Fair where Interesting enough, and this is where it gets wild, and again, I'm going to tell you to go to the website and really read up on all this, but the short side of it is, Klasky Kasupo made a deal with Mel, with Mattel, for the rights to kind of go in all 50-50, evenly split, where they would create our real monsters toys, and then also incorporate the pets of Frankenstein to kind of fill in the gaps to produce 12 initial toys. And that is where you get the Ah Real Monsters toy line. So that when they debuted later that year in Toys R Us for the Nickelodeon Toy Factory, which I'm just going to tell you, in looking at these old fashioned photos, this is just so much fun. It is so cool to see all this. But I never got to experience this. From what I can recall, my Toys R Us never had this setup. Perhaps it was in another section of the store, of which I never ventured to. But to see all the toys, everything they had for the Nicktoons setup, that is just so dang cool. And again, I have to give credit to Mel for this photo. Just to kind of illustrate what I can remember as a kid, these are real monsters. I want to say we're right next to the Kenner aliens. I think there was some Batman animated, but it was very much like probably two or three rungs of toys. I remember shuffling through them. They didn't have this giant real monsters artwork, poster, cutout, nothing like that. It was just a few toys here and there, and that was it. But like I said, the story is so interesting. That's the short end of it. Please, again, I'll have the link down in the description below, head over to Mel Bernkrantz's website, go through every single detail of which we will talk about toys that could have been made for the line had it continued shortly in this video. But for now, we're going to be talking about everything that you see before you, all 12 toys for the Nickelodeon Nicktoons Ah Real Monsters toy line by Mattel. Now, really, when I start any video, I love to take a look at the figures packaging. And when you know it, I have a crumb on card. My original crumb has been lost to time, so... Yeah, I had to get a new one for this video, but there he is all front and center at the bottom of the packaging in that crystal clear bubble. The artwork, the characters, vibrant, eye-catching, ah, real monsters, dare to scare with the grumble yelling on the side in his true character, of course. But again, I love the chomps taken out of the packaging. That's a nice touch. A little artist rendition, spits his eyeballs out, armpits really stink. Really curious to see after all these years if he really does stink still. On the back side of the packaging, the Monster Academy Scare Manual, and I miss this with modern toys. You see the bio, and this is actually a cool little tidbit. That's the Grumble's hand. He's going through the book. You got the diagram of Crumb, and then as we continue down the packaging, you get to see the entire Monster Academy class, all well, it only shows 11 figures, but there are 12 figures in the line. And yes, we will be looking at all 12. To round it up, we have the proof of purchase in case you're stuck way back in 1995 and need to look up the character of Crumb. You got the Mattel consumer information. And then right there in the bottom right hand corner, you get to see the one, the only Klasky Kasupo logo, which is very cool. And so now to kick everything off, we have Scarfer. And he's all about them slugs and bugs. And 
What I like about this character is that I didn't have really any of the accessories when I was a kid. He comes with this bowl, a very monstrous bowl. It has some residue in there. It's unpainted, unfortunately. You also get a bug. Now, the original figure, if you had one complete, comes with a variety of bugs, usually red and black versions of this guy. I only got one bug left, but he will do the trick. You also get this feeding spoon. If you couldn't guess what might be the toy gimmick here, you soon will see some magic. And again, having the figure, but never the accessories, and learning this really recently, recent years, this is quite amazing. But I love just the angle of the spoon. It's all bent and twisted. Scarfer himself, again, hailing from the original designs of Melbourne Krant for his Pets of Frankenstein, and then being recolored, possibly retooled a bit to kind of form fit the Ah Real Monsters factor. And that is really something to notice, is that while these Pets of Frankensteins initially started out as a separate monstrous line, they do work quite well in that Ah Real Monsters art style. Now on the back side, you'll see that Scarfer has an articulated tail. It will simply just rotate to and fro. It has little spikes all over it. Probably best to keep it up, just FYI. You get a little movement in the leg, one leg, but more on that in just a second. The arms are permanently out. They are not going to articulate, and the jaw articulates open and close like you're scarfing on something. But with those accessories, you're gonna scoop up one of those bugs right out of that bowl, and you're going to feed Scarfer. Now this is where it gets very fascinating to me. In terms of just kind of feeding him, right? You'll notice that, yeah, there's a little bit of resistance. There is a magnet in the top part of Scarfer and then in the feeding spoon, and it pushes the jaw open and kind of levitates it so that, yeah, it just kind of works itself in there and you can dump the bug right into Scarfer's mouth. And then he chomps and drools all over it. And in my mind, thinking about all real monsters, the cartoon and everything else, how great does that fit? But you'll notice right here on the bottom. And let's go back and talk about that leg articulation here. So you grab his leg and you're gonna push down as such, nothing happens. You kind of have to do it maybe a few times here and there, but it opens up the bottom of Scarfer and yes, he will poop out the bugs. So I love that. You feed him, he poops, you get the idea. That is a real monster in and of itself. And that is a very cool toy. Now, moving on from magnets and articulation, we have Haluga, and he seemingly got some guts. Now, this little guy is a very simple toy. And when I was a kid, I remember seeing this and going, it's really not all that interesting. But now I see it as, well, yeah, he kind of resembles certain monsters from the TV show, especially with the lips and the eyes. And yes, that is some real hair he's gotten, and no, your eyes do not deceive you, but he's seen better days in terms of paint and the sides of his mouth. Let's be quite honest, but I love him. And you simply just squish him. And what you're supposed to do is that you would just turn this guy completely inside out, which again, hails back to our real monsters, Oblina pulling her guts out, having that mouth full of intestines and everything else. But... Yes, sadly, over these years, my haluga has been starting to tear at the mouth. But you can clearly see, and very well painted, a lot of trash, there's a carrot, it's just full of guts. And that, in and of itself, again, going with the creepy, the gross, that's what works really well for a monster's toy line. He can also chomp down on your finger if you so choose. But like I said, he's seen better days, but you know what? We're just gonna go for it. I'm not gonna turn him all the way inside out, but I'll do this so that at least you can see what I'm talking about here. There you go. You can imagine what kind of guts and everything else this guy would morph into. A can, a carrot, whatever else is there. He's creepy, he's weird, he's a cool toy most definitely. And it's largely gonna be the same deal here as Kaluga. Ah, Haluga, Kaluga, who's naming these things? <laughs> 
but he's seemingly just a tadpole eyeball squid monster. The same kind of consistency as Haluga, but some nice paint all the way around. Again, yes, he's definitely seen some better days. In terms of Kaluga, he's a little bit more, let's say, less interesting. I like opening up Haluga's mouth and you get to see all the guts and everything else. Kaluga turns into a squid. He goes from an eyeball to a squid monster. And as you can see, yes, he's already starting to tear on the side of his mouth. It's one of those where I see what they were going for. Again, it's creepy. It's weird. It's monstrous. But it really doesn't do much. And it's not as cool as, let's say, Haluga. He's just kind of like, yeah, he's okay. And then going from some inside out creatures to now some water element toys, we have Poomps. And he's a gusher. There's a lot of subtext here in some of these descriptions. Just FYI. See if you can notice what I'm talking about. Poomps is one of those characters where you kind of have to do a double take, maybe even a triple take to figure out what exactly you're looking at here. He looks to be a six-legged creature with spikes of which you dip in the water and you squeeze him. And right there at the top, he would squirt out two areas of water. And that really is cool if it's going to be a water toy, if the paint is going to hold up, of which I'm kind of shocked that this one has pretty much stayed in fairly decent condition over the years. But yes, initially, when I first got him, I had to clean this guy up. The water is such a pain to get out of these things. No, we're not going to be doing it today. In terms of more water toys, though, we continue on with Snarfle. He's going to blow his beak. <laughs> Again, very much fitting with that Ah Real Monsters art style, the big bulging eyes. He's got these little wings, kind of looks like a deformed Ghostbusters Beetlejuice parrot, something like that. But yes, you would simply dunk him in water, squeeze him, and yes, he would blow water out of the two holes in his nose. At first, I thought, well, it comes out of his eyes. You would kind of think those are holes. Nope, those are just painted on there. But yes, from the paint to the design, you can kind of get a better idea of what you're looking at in terms of poops, which is questionable. At least you kind of get the idea of what Snarfle is all about. And when you know it, Snarfle was that extra 12 character that didn't make his way onto the back of the Ah Real Monsters blister cards. Continuing on one last time for some water toy action, we have Splug, the pool of drool. And this guy has some teeth. He's got those little cartoon eyes and what is he exactly? A brain? Something Krangish? Ninja Turtle? No, wouldn't you know it? He seems to be a, a torn out tongue of some sorts. Or that's just what he resembles. Perhaps he's a slug. Who knows? But again, it meets that form factor of monster, gross out, squeezy water toy of which he would shoot two jets of water out of the back of his severed tongue action. The paint sure could be better off. It is a very old vintage toy at this point. While it's not the best, but in all honesty, he's a lot more interesting to say it's a severed tongue as to whatever Poomps is and then the weird parrot fish thing that is Snarfle. I definitely like this guy for his weirdness. Moving on, we have a dual pack of sorts in the form of Groink and Sproink. They are the Spit Squad. You see what I mean? <laughs> it's on all the packaging. I'm not making this up. But in terms of Sproink, yes, that is definitely an Ah Real Monsters illustration brought to life in toy form. The eyes, the teeth, all the various hands. That is very cool. And yes, you definitely guessed it. He is a bit of a missile that is going to be shooting out of Groink's mouth. <laughs> it's very simplistic. But the yellow teeth, the eyes, everything looks great. He's not going to stand on his own. You're going to have to use a little back piece to kind of support him. But then you have his teammate, Groink. And I got to say, with those eyes, with those colors, yeah, that is very Ah uh, Real Monsters. Very cartoony. The big red lips with the teeth sticking out, the giant hole in the middle of which, yeah, you're going to put Sproink in there. I like the different color variations. Every single fingernail, tooth, toenail is painted 
And I love that. That's some nice attention to detail and it's all really well done. There's little to no slop on the sky. All the eye pupils look amazing. Everything is really just looking straight ahead so that you would then marry these two as such. And if you could guess it by now, you're gonna push down on Groink and you're gonna spit out Sproink. <laughs> Of course, right? Well, let's just say this. As I always do these videos with these old toys and they never seem to work out. I got it to work once. Off camera, it barely worked. We'll just say that as it's pretty much not working now. It's just not something that, well, see now he's all deflated. He's not even gonna move. You gotta pull out Sproink out of Groink's mouth. You get the idea. He would shoot the missile out at your real monsters or whoever else. It would scare your family, your friends, and that is the epitome of ah, real monsters. <laughs> Moving on now from inside out toys, water squeezing toys, and missile shooters, we have Werfel the Grub Gobbler. <laughs> They did not let up on these descriptions and just ran with it as it would seem. But Werfel himself, again, the bug eyes, the colors, everything really stands out. Everything is bright and ooh, it's like shaking some keys in front of a baby. And for me, I'm like, yeah, that's a really nice color you got going on. But it matches. You got the lips. You got the blue around the eyes. It's awesome. You got that big venom tongue sticking out. And then, of course... You have the permanent string of which you have to constantly fiddle with. On one end, we have a bug, a fly of some sort. There's no paint on it, but it is sculpted very nicely. And on the other end, you get more of a giant centipede with eyes. It has glowing yellow eyes. So at least that has a little bit more paint apps to it. And both of them are very creepy, but cool. And what you would do, and it very much reminded me of my first Spider-Man Toy Biz figure, is that you would essentially just pull on one end and he would race to the other side while then allowing him to retract, moving consistently back and forth between each of the two bugs while his legs spin. It looks cool. It's like a spider going after its prey in a web. You can clearly see, you pull the bugs one way, his legs go, it sucks up the other bug into his mouth, and lo and behold, he's chomping down on it and he is definitely happy. And then, you just gotta make sure you move your hands in reverse, yeah. He just does a total bicycle kick going the other way. So then you have the epitome of the toy that is Snarful, again, the colors really stand out. I like the teeth, the tongue. Yes, the string gets in the way. I'm actually shocked that the string has held up all these years. That's quite impressive. Werfel is definitely one of my faves from the Ah Real Monsters toy line. And so now with all those pets of Frankenstein out of the way, we have a true real monster in the form of the head scare master, the Gromble. And he is so delightfully on model with his little accessory here, which is the student whose nose may or may not be running. For those of you who have seen the second episode of Ah Real Monsters, you may know and recognize this little guy. He's not exactly spot on, but there he is, right? And he has a great sculpt to him. He's very reminiscent of Playmates toys with the Ninja Turtles. If any of the characters ever came with a sidekick, boom, there you go. The Gromble himself, again, the paint has seen better days. I totally get it. He's very reminiscent of the Blue Meanie and Raggedy Ann and Andy characters. But the character of the Gromble is such a unique being all his own. He's terrifying. He can be sweet sometimes. He is the head scare master for a reason. He's holding a bone in one hand and he has a pointer finger in the other, of which I'm a little disappointed they did not paint the red fingernails on this guy, but he has his goatee and wouldn't you know it, he has his lovely, lovely red high heels on. And it looks like he's in a constant state of motion while also just kind of standing there. It's a very interesting pose. He has his little tail here, which when you push it down, his jaw will move due to the mechanism inside. Now, when I say move, and when I was a kid, I used to say, it doesn't really do what the packaging says it does. And if you look closely right here, as I pointed out with the student, in the second episode, as his nose is running, the Gromble yells at him and then chomps down on the guy and spits him out, which 
you don't really ever see him again. But wouldn't you know it, you can do that exact scene from that exact episode. Yeah, you move his tail up and down, he seemingly is chomping down on him, and then, as the packaging says, if you push it down hard enough, <laughs> which kinda sorta, eh, we'll try it one more time, yeah, there you go. Yeah, he spits out the students. Kinda sorta. He's more so on model than anything. I like the sculpts, I like the paints, I like that he comes with an accessory he can kinda chow down on. That's very interesting. The Gromble is one of the standouts from the Mattel uh, Real Monsters toy line. Now, moving on, we have the one and only Crumb. And I always love that in the cartoon show. We really learned a lot about his backstory. He's one of the best monsters on the show. Really cares about his friends. And I was going to tell you now, I have to know if this still smells. <sniffs> oh, yeah, that's uh, that's the stuff right there. I'll be honest with you. He still smells but it's not as overwhelming as I remember as a kid. It's just kind of lingering there. But I love the realistic arm hair that he has sticking out. And then the subsequent little paint apps all around the body for his other little line marks, art style, hair, whatever you want. But he too has a squishy little mouth to him of which you can chomp down on your finger if you'd like. His gimmick more so fits the character that we see in the cartoon show. Thankfully... His eyeballs are on a string. They're not going anywhere. You could imagine what the toys would look like at this point if they weren't on string. But as the packaging says, you are supposed to pull the eyeballs out of his hands and then slip them into his mouth as he would often do in the cartoon show. There's not a whole lot of leeway if you have to hold your own eyeballs and then do other things like climb out of a garbage dump or something to that extent. You would then kind of squeeze him again at the middle and yes, more or less, we'll just say his eyeballs would then immediately retract back into his hands. It kind of sort of works. It's endearing. It's fun. I more so like the smell elements to him. I think that that really fits the character. And I love that the eyeballs are on string because once again, as I would say, after all these years, no one would have a crumb with them eyeballs. Moving on, we have the brains of the outfit in the form of Oblina. And like I said, Initially, when I got the Ah Real Monsters toy line, Oblina came years and years later. I never saw Oblina on store shelves. In fact, it was one of those things where you kind of thought, did Oblina ever come out? I love the eyes on her. She has her eyelashes. She has little tufts of hair. Now, Yes, I'm going to agree with a lot of you out there. It seemingly looks like she's flipping off the camera. It doesn't look like she's giving a thumbs up because then that would be the wrong finger. Whatever she's doing, it's just an odd hand in general. Thankfully, this hand on the other side is outstretched, but she has no articulation up top in the middle section, nowhere like that, nor does she have any articulation in the arms. You'll notice a little switch right there, of which we will move that around. She has her candy cane J with a little bit of tuft of hair on her tail. The legs are actually articulated, so you can get those going all the way out, and she can actually sit on her butt, if you so choose to display her as such, because she could be very, not only back heavy, but forward heavy. She's a little bit all over the place and she really takes that sweet spot to get her standing and standing well. But to go back to that switch on the back, you'd move it up and her jaw would extend and tongue would fly out. And that would be, again, the epitome of Ah Real Monsters, scaring the masses, scaring for the grumble. It's their lesson. That is very cool, and I like how simplistic it is. It really doesn't break up the character. It doesn't destroy the aesthetics of Oblina as an action figure. It's just very cool overall. It's just the arms that I wish could be articulated to do oh so much more in this sense. And then lastly, of course, we have my favorite character of the cartoon, Ickis. And it just simply says, he's under your bed, but of course, he is. Ickis, the red bunny rabbit, son of Slickus. Very simplistic toy, but also one of my favorites growing up. His arms would kind of sort of move. More on that in just a second. You had full articulation in the feet in that they would just rotate. His little elven kind of shoes were always cool. And it does help him stand 
quite nicely. Not much going on in the back. His kind of flying saucer shaped head. Just very simplistic, very minimal on the paint details. But you'll notice that the ears too have a little bit of articulation. They can kind of go forward or you can kind of put them going back, which may or may not aid in his little scare tactic here, of which you would simply just push down on the back of his head. His eyes would go from white to blood red and his teeth drop down while his mouth opens and arms go up. And again, much like Oblina, much like Crumb, you're taking the epitome of Ickis. It's just a bummer that he can't grow to about three stories tall. But his eyes, I always remember that little curdling sound when he'd get all mad and get scary and spooky. For such a simplistic toy line, they've really matched what you see on the show. His teeth are painted nicely. I like that you can kind of sort of see the fangs within the gap in his mouth, but I just love how the effectiveness of the white part, the teeth dropping down, showing the red eyes. That is just very cool. That is just very much Ickis, and that wraps it up for the 12 initial Ah uh, Real Monsters figures. But lo and behold, wouldn't you know it, over on Mel Burncrantz's website, he gave us a little bit of a treat in the form of some action figure designs that he worked on for Ah uh, Real Monsters. Now, these never came out. These never came to fruition but it's so much fun to see what could have been. And I always like to think that in an alternate reality, an alternate universe, somewhere, some way, an alternate universe me is enjoying all 17 waves of the Ah Real Monsters toy line. From the Mr. Monster Head to a bit of a vehicle in the form of a wild ride dumpster. That's certainly interesting. Again, I would think that the Ah Real Monsters would lend itself to gross, disgusting toys, which I think they've definitely captured here with this initial first wave, but not everything is going to work. However, that being said, in later episodes and seasons, we got to know more about Simon the Monster Hunter, and I like that he's kind of like one of those we'll say Transformer slash Rock Lords kind of thing where he's just like a pile of garbage and then he springs up into looking like Simon. I always thought that was kind of interesting and I would love to see more toys like that. They even had a design for Snorch and Zimbo of which that looks awesome as well. Ah, it's such a bummer that we didn't get these toys, but there are so many more over on Mel's website. Like I said, please go and check it out. As with me being a fan of the Real Monsters toy line, we also had video games, and I played the Ah Real Monsters Genesis game into the ground. And I say that because back in the day, Getting video games as a kid was few and far between. If your parents got you a new video game, either for your birthday or Christmas, you had to play it into the ground. It was definitely a different time period and games were sure as heck expensive, especially to just be buying them left and right for a kid. Now, I will say this. I did have fun with this game. I did like the graphics. Some of the voices definitely threw me off. They definitely were not the voices from the show. They were actually more like kid screams, oddly enough. You had some odd side quests. It was very easy to get lost. It was cool and okay for that time period, but definitely more of a frustrating game for me than anything. But I'll always remember the initial front cover of all three of them chasing a rat. That was very cool. And then seemingly for a long while, All Real Monsters kind of took a break. Now, there has been various merch items released over the years. Some of it good, some of it, eh, it's up in the air. But I'm happy to say that in 2024, the fine folks over at Mondo Toys have brought the All Real Monsters toy line back in grand fashion. With their new Mondo squads, you can get Ickis, Crumb, and Oblina, along with Zimbo and characters like Bonsty in this toy line. And what I love about it is that they are spot on caricature, we'll say statuesque action figures of these characters. They look amazing. Ickis rounds out around six inches tall. Oblina stands at eight inches and Crumb is around that six inch mark as well. But the way that these look, the way that they're portrayed in Mondo's photography, 
they look amazing. There are two versions. You can get standard or you can get the limited edition, which garners you more accessories, more monstrous bits that you can interswap with your characters. So you can have elements like Oblina's guts being pulled out or Crumb putting his eyeballs in his mouth and scaring the masses with characters like Monsty and then Zimbo, of which, yeah, we definitely now need a snorch. The sky is the limit. I kind of like this more simplistic take. You get all the characters that you would want, the arm swip swap, the head portraits, the mouths. Everything is very straightforward. Everything is very interesting to kind of customize and cobble together your own version of Ickis Crumb and Oblina. So for that alone, I don't need an overly articulated action figure line. I'm really not looking for that for Ah Real Monsters. I loved what Mattel did back in the day. It was simplistic. And I don't think everything needs to be so overly articulated. This just looks fun. This meets my fancy and I ordered this day one. I cannot wait for these to arrive. So again, I will put a link down in the description below. If you're interested in any of these characters from Mondo, you can grab the entire set now if you so choose. So that basically wraps it up for my retro shiz look back at the 1995 Ah Real Monsters toy line from Mattel. And I gotta tell you, from my initial thoughts on the toy line as a kid growing up to where we are now, it's just fascinating. Please go and check out Mel Burncraft's website. You will not be disappointed. You could see so many more designs, tidbits, info, everything. It's very, very awesome, very fascinating. And just overall, the design, the classy Kasupo designs of the show, the idea of you don't have to be scared, even monsters are scared, it resonates with you as a kid, as did real Ghostbusters, so now with our real monsters. It's all about being real, and that's what really resonated with me as a kid, and definitely resonates with me now. So I wanna thank you all for being here today. Happy Halloween to you all, and here's to another great year of toy collecting ahead. So, I'm gonna leave you guys with that. As always, drink some great coffee, eat some great food, but most importantly, remember, as you go around trick or treat this Halloween season, Maybe just slip in a prick your meat or prick your feet just to see if you get any rise out of those who are handing out candy. And when you do, let me know what you found. I'll talk to you guys soon. Adios.